Okay, we're going to be a little bit early. Going to be about two minutes early or so. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have good audio. And this is a revisiting of Don't Buy Junk. This will be part three. Rarely do we do a part three, but I have some things to talk about. And I think it's important that we talk about quality again. <clears throat> there's, there's some real issues, folks. There's some real issues with quality or lack thereof in a lot of things these days. And I've been doing a lot of research on shoes, different kinds of, uh, of dress shoes. We could say high-end. I mean, made, uh, uh, not made to measure, not bespoke, right? But high-end, uh, regular production shoes, if you will. <clears throat> And people talk about Allen Edmonds. They talk about uh, Alton. Uh, they talk about um, uh, what's that English? Well, churches, of course. And then there's the other English brand that the name escapes me right now. But anyway, that makes shoes for Brooks Brothers and a bunch of places. Uh, so there are a lot of options out there. And the problem is that some of these brands have, uh, how should I say, cheapened up their manufacturing processes, and there are potential issues, <clears throat> potential issues. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And obviously, we can also talk about this with regard to watches. There are some issues with some watches that are not as good as they maybe once were and then of course there are a lot of watches that are better than they once were so there's some been, been some improvement in some brands I, I think we can make the argument that Grand Seiko the the newest models of Grand Seiko's are pretty much stellar that especially this 002 that's on wrist watch check 002 watch check 002 so yeah especially that stunner <clears throat> that is a Quantum leap forward for high-end dress watches. Chi Town's in the house. Talk about quality, Craig. My seven-year-old iPhone 5S is still running and usable. Yes, they do have a long service life. iPhones do have a long service life. That's correct. So do Mac computers. This computer right here that that we have the lovely Brief Fit Dances website on. That's what we closed with in the last show. That computer is a 2010 MacBook Pro 2010 <coughs> MacBook Pro <coughs> so uh, plan to be at Bellagio tomorrow okay cool 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 uh, and Carlos is in the house William Josh is okay my wife smashed my wife smashed his iPhone screen today my wife smashed his iPhone screen today fortunately we have the Apple care okay uh, do, do you mean my wife smashed her iPhone screen today or is this something is this is something special going on with Carlos Joey's in the house <laughs> casino open tomorrow in Vegas okay fella in the house uh, T-Town, I argue that today's Seikos aren't as good as the old ones. Quality control isn't as good. The movements have more problems. I hear you. I think you're right. I think you could be right on that. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so one thing I want to show you is that I've been watching. And let me see if I can get to my history here so I can show you. Da, 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 da. Time check while I'm doing this. <clears throat> and of course it's loading slow because the streaming likes to hog the bandwidth. CK says, are most auto watches simply jewelry if they aren't even accurate? Good point. Good point there. I do like accuracy in my watches. Okay, um, how do I get to my history here? Oh, here we go, history, <clears throat> okay. Okay, 
All right, so here's a couple of videos that I've been uh, checking out here recently. And one, it, it, pretty cool, I recommend you take a look at Beto's Leatherworks. Beto's Leather, Leather, Leatherworks, take a look at his channel because he has some videos where he goes through and repairs some shoes and, and puts those nice high-end uh, JR uh, soles, leather soles on there. So check his, his out. And then the, the video, the third one down there, why JR uh, Rendenbach Leather Soles are the Best in the World by Kirby Allison. Kirby has some interesting stuff on his channel. You guys have probably seen his channel. But that's a really cool video that explains why those leather soles are so good. <clears throat> and they're six month, they have a six month long tanning process, similar to what is done with horine leather with the, um, the horse, horse hide, the cordovan. Uh, so <clears throat> that's very interesting, talking about those JR soles. And of course, we've also talked about on the channel uh, Brian the bootmaker his channel is also very interesting <clears throat> for some of that and <clears throat> what's interesting about looking at some of these channels where they're repairing these shoes especially if you see where they're repairing like a pair of Allen Edmonds or, or Alt Altons or some, something some, some higher end churches or something you can see that the construction the different kind of construction, the way these things are put together, the way the insoles are, the way the midsoles are, the way the, the vamp is, and all these kinds of things, how they build these things. Kyle, Kyle, we need you to check out Brian the Bootmaker. He's in LA. That would be a cool field trip for you all to make if you could somehow go and meet Brian the bootmaker in person and maybe do a live stream from there that would be so freaking cool because that guy is super cool super cool guy uh, Brian the bootmaker in Los Angeles so maybe you could figure out where he is that I think that if I was in LA I would make a road trip to see him he, he he's he's cool <clears throat> let's see Lance is saying hey um Curiously, it seems that back glass is more expensive than the screen. Okay. Um, when they replace the glass, uh, excuse me, on the side with the screen, they don't actually replace the screen, do they? Don't they just replace the glass over it? I don't know how that works. I've never broken one of mine. I don't, I don't drop my phone and break it. Uh, that seems to be a thing that people like to do, but I, I stay away from, from that sort of thing. That's just me. But... Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Joey says, CK, my spring drive is plus four seconds in a month. Not bad. My uh, 002 is not quite that accurate. Uh, it's gained about, I think, about 15 seconds in six weeks, uh, which still is not bad at all. Not bad at all. <clears throat> but not as accurate as my 231, which is insanely accurate. Jaden's in the house. Been watching Beto's channel for a while. Great channel. There you go. Uh, Joey, that's incredible. Going to get a spring drive as a daily wear. That's not a bad move. Are you thinking about the new models that just came out, that they just announced? And that's right. iPhone 11 front glass is $250 to fix while the back is $500. Whoa. Probably not a good idea to drop and break one of those puppies. <clears throat> so on my phone... I just have the leather, the Apple case that's leather because it's very trim. It fits very trim to the phone. You get full access to the rear port here. If I want to plug on one of my microphones that plugs onto there or whatever, I get full unobstructed access to that, which is very important. And it's very trim. It's, it still makes it, keeps it very trim and thin, yet it gives protection all the way around so that if you do drop it, it's, it's more likely to hit that. And probably not do damage. Of course, this phone is metal on the back, which I like. I wouldn't want glass on the back. This is, I, I believe, stainless steel on the back. I'd have to take off the case to look, but I be, believe it's all stainless steel. Or is it? Or is it not? Let me look. Well, I really don't want to pull this off. Does anybody know what the iPhone 10 is on the back? I don't know. I have. I, it's been so long since I looked at it. I think it might be metal, but maybe it's not. Maybe it is glass. 
Anyway, it's been covered the whole time, so there's that. Um, R. Wags is in the house. He says, hi, Craig, and all the wrench gang. Absolutely. He's probably relaxing out by the lake. Uh, let's see. Triforce Rich says, what's up, everyone? And Lance is in the house. Okay. Um, okay. And let's see what else we got going on here. Uh, Craig, I highly recommend people don't use these thin feather light cases for their phones since they don't protect internal parts a drop caused by iPhone caused my iPhone 7s camera OIS mount to break cheat town yeah well it's best not to be dropping your phone <laughs> I, I think you I think people should be more careful with their phone and not be dropping it um, that's the that would be my recommendation to people Carlos says I broke mine once and they replaced the full screen okay Jaden's in the house hey Craig um, 15 seconds in six weeks is incredible for a daily wear. CK in the house. Kyle Jett says, can we get Kent in here today? That's a good question. I haven't heard from Kent for a little while. Maybe he's he's out and about entertaining again because some places are starting to open up in Pennsylvania, and some places have actually started opening up um, in um, Maryland. Even Adventure Park USA just opened, so that's very good news. Do we know where? I don't know where Brian the Bootmaker is, but maybe it's on his channel. Let me see if the information's on his channel. Let me see here. If I click on About. Um, oh, yeah. Torrance, California. Okay, so maybe... Now, I'm not so sure... I'm not 100% sure that that address is his physical location... Uh, but that's the club he call, calls a Rolly Club, and and that's an there's an address. But probably would be best to email him. This is on the about page on his uh, on his um, YouTube. Probably be best to email him and see if you could come by the shop sometime and do a live stream from there because he's a cool guy, and you see he's got 138,000 subscribers, so. So he's no joke. Um, and if you ever need any boots repaired, he would be the one to go to in that area. He, he does amazing work. Let's see. Buy top of the range phone, brand new from last year. Still will do all what you need. They have in incremental changes nowadays. There you go. Uh, new ones. Uh, Yes, sir. New ones, Grandpa Craig. Just got got to wait another two years to arrange for funds and book my flight to the USA. We get the snowflake here in India, but I love the green second sand on the new Seiko. Uh, Steve will ship to you, I'm pretty sure. I would email him. I think he will ship to you. I don't think you have to buy, buy a plane ticket. Yes. I don't think you'll have to do that, but but you should you should try to wrangle one sooner rather than later because they probably will sell out and get pretty hard to get. But that's just a guess on my part. <clears throat> iPhone iPhone 10 is glass on both sides with stainless steel band. Okay, all right, that makes sense then. Well, at least I've had mine covered. I, I, it may be broken under there, and I don't even know it. But I haven't dropped mine, so it probably isn't. Kent was last seen at a strip club. There you go. They use phones all the time. We'll drop it one time. Screens to the end of the edge will crack. Yeah, probably, like I say, not a good idea to be dropping phones. Triforce Rich is in the house. Craig iPhone in 18 karat gold and titanium gaze back. There you go. Uh, let's see. Craig, what is the best wearing for casual business attire? Okay, yeah, we can talk about that. Absolutely. Kyle's in the house. Uh, Torrance is close by. Good. We got heavy import duty here if we import ourselves. They aren't limited. Okay. India has stupid taxes on imported watches. It makes more sense for you to buy locally. Okay, got you. Okay. <coughs> mm. Oh, boy. <coughs> Something is, is messing with my throat. Mm. Okay. <coughs> Casual attire, that's easy. That's the easy part. Bill's khakis, 
Okay, get yourself some Bill's khakis. And like I say, they're all over eBay. You can get them brand new on eBay for decent prices. You can buy them direct from Bill's, sometimes on sale. Uh, if you really want to pinch pennies, get yourself some mint condition used ones on eBay, maybe for as little as 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, they you know, usually sell for $100 or more. Uh, on the website. Uh, so get yourself some Bill's khakis if you're in the United States of America. And get yourself some nice uh, polo shirts or golf shirts, something like what I'm wearing right now. Now this was from Congressional Country Club, but you know, you got the idea. A nice golf short or, or golf shirt or polo shirt. A nice button-down Oxford shirt with, uh, you know, roll the sleeves up like I often do. Uh, any kind of like a high-end shirt like a uh, Gitman Brothers or, or something like that. Um, an older Brooks Brothers sh shirt, not like the imported ones they have now, but the Made in USA ones. Get something like that and roll the sleeves up and wear that with khakis with a nice alligator belt and some nice um, moccasin-style shoes, maybe from uh, Russell Moccasin Company. And you're set. You're set. That's the way I say, that's the way I say you go. And if it's cooler, cooler weather, then you, you don't roll the sleeves up and you wear like a cashmere sport coat with all of the above. You just throw on a cashmere sport coat, uh, you know, maybe from like, um, uh, maybe Oxford, maybe Oxford, maybe, you know, any of the big names, uh, you know, Brooks Brothers sold a bunch of them back in the day uh, that were good. Hickey Freeman, you know, a bunch of bunch of makes. I've got a whole bunch of pictures of all of the above on my uh, Flickr. Just go to my Flickr and search clothing or something like that, and you'll find a whole photo set with all that kind of good stuff that you can wear. A lot of it casual. Um, let's see here. Even though we got nearly all brands here, Patek isn't here, isn't there? Okay, new Soko Grand Sickle Mosa, USA only, exactly. Although prices at stores are in tune with international markets, sometimes even cheaper, okay. So yeah, you've got to find somebody then that's traveling here to carry it back for you, I guess. I guess that's the only way to do that, if you can't have them shipped in. Jane's in the house. Craig, what are some barbecue grills that are high quality maybe aside from Weber oh grills for grilling that's a good question I'm not really up on that I haven't bought any of those for a long time Weber always was decent back in the day but that that it's a good question I think the guy to list to ask uh, for that is Durr I think he would be the one to ask hopefully he'll be in the show here today and you'll be able to ask him because he barbecues all the time um go smart casual polo shirts or golf shirts and chinos lance is calling in okay hold on <clears throat> hold on here gotta try to answer this call let me try to answer this call okay hold on hold on lance let me make you full screen here this is an emergency call from lance can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Get my headset on here. I can hear you. Okay. So All right. We got we got Lance. Here. Got Lance in here. You're gonna do an unboxing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I from, got the wallet. Uh, it's right here in the box. And this is from Brooks Brothers. By the yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. It's Brooks, the um Brooks Brothers um uh capskin wallet. Yeah. By the way, Brooks Brothers, they're having some pretty aggressive sales I don't know did they actually go bankrupt or is that in the process or what what's the status on that do you know so I believe that they did go uh, bankrupt um I'm not but uh I mean I'm I'm sure that like they will like um uh come out from that though because I mean they're still a very like um, a, a successful uh, um so maybe company. somebody will take over and and buy their assets and all that but we'll see okay all right so I got a quick um comment here that we got to deal with um let's see here uh tit titanium versus stainless steel pros and cons I'll switch to the 231 real quick the 231 there this is a perfect uh, way to to illustrate that 
That model's available in both stainless steel. That's the watch on the left there. That's available in stainless steel and the, the titanium. The titanium looks pretty much like stainless steel. You can see there it's right next to a stainless steel watch. You really can't tell the difference. So looks-wise, it looks great. It's also very scratch-resistant. It is held up really well. And the biggest thing is the comfort on wrist. It's much lighter, much more comfortable on wrist. And of course, titanium is more, even more uh, corrosion resistant than stainless steel. So you get additional corrosion resistance. Um, I can't think of any real downsides except for it's more expensive. So that's a con. It is more uh, the list price if you compare that exact same watch in titanium versus stainless. It is more money to buy the, the titanium. but I would always buy the titanium version in that case. I would not buy, now that's uh, grade 5 titanium, so it's very scratch resistant. I wouldn't buy a grade 2 titanium watch. Those scratch just by looking at them. So two different animals. But there you go. That, that's the quick rundown. Okay, let's get back to your unboxing. The okay, Lance, so, um, the Lancer. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, um, I'll, um, I'll turn the, uh, um, uh, um, the camera around. Okay. So, Take so, care. Take your time. I'll do a time check while you're doing that. There's a time check, an official time check. It is 19 minutes after the hour on the East Coast. We are live. Is the view good? Uh, you might need to point it down a little bit more towards the package. Keep going a little more. Okay, good. Perfect. We're right on the package now. Okay, in an inner box. Okay, all right. Now, what I want you to do is is get that bigger box out of the way, and so that we're just seeing the small box. Okay, now point the camera down a little bit more. Perfect, perfect. Okay, good. Looking good. Oh, I see you've got your gold stunner on. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm about it on, yeah. There you go. How's it running? Yeah, so um, it's running uh, pretty well. Um, um, oh. it's really accurate. Uh, mm -hmm. and um, the the power reserve though, it's not great. I think it's like forty hours, so okay. I do have to like always, uh, make sure you got it wound. Yeah, yeah. like I have to. See, that's where having a power a that's where having a power reserve indicator really comes in handy because you can just look oh, and yeah. see where you stand. Here's the wallet. So I got there were two um uh, um um color choices. There was a, um a black and then there was a brown and um I got the brown one. Okay, good, good move. That's good. So here's the inside. There's just some tags in here that'll take us. So like some instruction stuff. Feels feels very soft, right? Oh yeah, very very soft. So here's the wallet. So mm -hmm. it's got in total it's got um uh, six um slots mm -hmm. uh, parts. And then here, I don't know if you can see it is genuine uh, leather mm -hmm. and um, made in Italy, made, right? Yeah, made in Italy. Yeah. And then there it says Brooks Brothers. Yeah, got their little logo there. Yeah. And then in the inside, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it has uh, the logo on the inside too. Can't really see that though. No, but yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it ha yeah, it has the logo there too, and uh, it's really. Um, I can tell this is a very like high, uh, like a high um, uh, grade of leather. Yeah. Somebody's then, asking yeah. what brand is it? It's basically Brooks Brothers' own brand, really. It doesn't have another brand on there, right? Uh, no, no. Like it doesn't yeah. say Bond Street or anything like that. No. Okay. No. Yeah. So um, it's it was made for Brooks Brothers by some company in Italy. They do this all the time, where where they farm out and say, you know, I'll buy 500 wallets from you. What's the price? And and they, they brand it with the Brooks Brothers brand. This is very common. And you've got two slots inside there. Uh, yeah, it's got one there. No, I then... mean on the money, when you open it up for the money, there's two compartments there too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's one yeah. there and then another one right there. Oh. See, my only issue with a wallet like this is once you get all your stuff in there, it, it it's, it's pretty bulky, right? Oh, uh, yeah, so yeah. So you got to be right careful. Now it's pretty thin. But yeah, you got to be careful how much you put in there. But uh, yeah, now what are you what are you using now for your wallet? Okay, so I'm, I'll get it out. So this is a Coach wallet that I'm using now. 
And um, it's not like it's not like a real coach wallet. It's more, well, it's a real coach product, but um, it's the ones um, um, from the outlet. So it's not yeah. like uh, it's not like I didn't buy this one at the coach store. Well, I got this um, at the coach outlet. How long ago? Did About you get... five years ago. And where is this one made? Do you know? Does it say uh, anywhere? I believe it's made in uh, Malaysia. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, they so used yeah. to make everything in the USA until they started, you know, whoring out their name. Yeah, um, this is just what I'm using now and everything. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it works well, but... Now, why yeah. did you upgrade? I mean, why did you upgrade? What were you not happy about with your coach? Well, I wasn't... I. I I'm, well, the only thing that I really, the, the, one of the main reasons why was because uh, the grain uh, of like, of like, a, of um, leather on the coach wallet, mm -hmm. it's kind of um, a little bit like, I mean, like I, when I bought the wallet, I thought that I would like, like the way that uh, like the wallet feels and everything. Mm -hmm. But now like over time, it's like starting like to crack a little bit and like. And it does does not doesn't have the feel that you like. Yeah, and also it doesn't feel super high end. And mm -hmm. the um and so in the Brooks Brothers one, you also got a good deal on it, right? Oh yeah, because the retail on the Brooks Brothers was I believe one eighty, but uh, they had a sale on it uh, on, so I got it for um one hundred twenty. Okay, and and so yeah, so that's going to be a nice, comfortable wa uh, wallet, no no doubt. Um, and it will last you a long time. Take decent oh, yeah. take oh. decent decent care of it I you know as you know I use more a more like a card wallet that's designed to to carry credit cards and and things like that and I carry my money separately in a money clip so that I don't so so I don't have as much bulk right yeah in, in my pocket um, and at some point you might want to experiment with with that but you know if you want a bigger wallet you got one and you got and it's very similar to what you have now so obviously it's going to hold everything you need to hold. Uh, oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it will probably work. So I'll tell you what, what, I, what we started to talk about with the, with the Brooks Brothers and their bankruptcy and all that. What I'm noticing is I'm noticing they're really cutting some prices on some things, especially some of their uh, Cordovan uh, uh, shoes, some of their higher-end shoes, uh, some of which are made in England. Um, there, some of those they're really cutting the prices significantly, like forty percent. And then sometimes you can get an additional discount off of that uh, if you have a code or whatever. So people are just getting insane deals. Of course, I went and checked, and they didn't have my size. So they're selling out of certain sizes. So anybody that's watching the broadcast that's interested in some really high-end uh, shoes, especially the Shell Cordovan stuff. That stuff is, is hard to get sometimes. Uh, see if you can get a deal. See if they've got your size and you can get a deal. Uh, the, you might get, you know, kind of the deal of a lifetime on a shoe like that, especially the Shell Cordovan stuff, because that stuff can be hard to get sometimes. Uh, let me, let's catch up on the um, comments here. Um, da -da -da -da. Just trying to... Okay, somebody says looks classy. Um, let's see here. What's your favorite Oyster Perpetual dial color? A lot of people are chiming in about that. Uh, reminds me of, of George Constella's wallet. I don't know who that is. Um, we're talking OP guys. My favorite is the white grape dial. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just going through here to see if there's anything else we need to address. Um, Craig, is it acceptable for a money clip to be made of non-precious metal? Well, yeah, get one that's made of titanium, maybe. Maybe get one that's made of... Um, they have some that they claim are carbon fiber, but I'm not sure they're really carbon fiber. I think they might be scams. They might really just be plastic. But, uh, yeah, I think a good, um, a good titanium one uh, would be affordable and would probably hold up. I don't think there'd be a problem with that. And somebody says, I have a rhodium obsession. Got an Oris. Okay. Um, love the fluted bezel and Jubilee bracelet. Okay. Williams watches. I also like the olive doll on the Oyster Petrol 34, but don't like the 34 millimeter size. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Be careful. Be careful manipulating your wallet, Lance. Single man uses to carry very private things inside. Oh, okay. So yeah, it, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> fanny pack, Craig. No, no, I don't care. I, now I do have my um, rig that I use my my uh, think tank system for carrying camera gear around the waist. I do use that when I'm covering events. And uh, let's see here. My Oris is uh, my Oris is date relief. It's like homage to the Rhodium Yacht Master. Okay. Uh, I hope Rolex releases a Oris Retro 36 with an olive dial. I would definitely think about picking one up. Okay. Prius Segway Fanny Pack would would not be surprising. Um, let's see here. Um, Trifor Switch. I'll have to look into Brooks Brothers sale. I have a bunch of shirts, decent quality, but on a big sale, good value. Yeah, no, I'm not so sure about the shirts there. Those might be imported. Those might not be worth buying, period, for any price. So be very, very careful. But some of the shoes that they have, uh, some of those, uh, the Cordovan, the Shell Cordovan <laughs> ones, are definitely uh, something very, very interesting. And I'll, I'll show you an example here in a minute uh, as soon as we finish up with Lance. But I'm just going through these comments here again um Jaden says nice snag lance uh, lance do you have a knife yes yeah, so i have a um swiss army knife but uh, and okay. that's pretty much it which, i'm not which really one? like, like which, a which, knife. which swiss army knife do you have i i don't remember i think it's called the field master i think it's called i'm mm -hmm. i'm not sure i got it like a while ago i'm not but i don't really like use it that much okay Okay. Yeah. So you don't EDC it. You don't carry it. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, like okay. the only things that I use it, um as like um any as like a, um that I use daily would be a watch, hmm. a wallet, phone, and sunglasses, and that's pretty much it. Gotcha. Like gotcha. I don't really uh, carry a knife. Okay. I'm gonna let you go because I'm gonna show a couple things to answer their questions here. Uh, okay. About the well, fanny pack, and we're gonna show you some with the shoes that I was talking about too. Craig, can you pull up Brooks Brothers' website and go, yes, I will do that. All right, thanks for calling in. Okay, well, Just like uh, that, Lance, Thank live you. on the show, live on the show, the Lancester, the Lancester, live on the show, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's go to Brooks Brothers. Oh, first of all, let's deal with the fanny pack. Let's deal with the fanny pack. The fanny pack question. Give me a second here. I'm searching Think Tank on my channel and see if this comes up. See if we get lucky here. See if we get lucky. Okay. All right. We'll show the close-up. We'll show the close-up of the fanny pack. The fanny pack. There's the fanny pack that I wear. That's what we call the think tank, think tank system. That's on Audrey, of course, at the time of the photo, but um, it fits me, and that's what I usually wear. Now, it is configured a little bit differently now where I can hang a camera on both sides, and I've got a couple more pouches on it, but it's you get the idea. You get the idea of, of what the fanny pack is that I use for events. Okay, so now let's go to Brooks, but oh, you wanted to see the whole shot with, with Audrey complete. There's Audrey complete with, with the uh, think tank system. But that can be reconfigured on the fly. You can put different pouches on it and different hangers for the cameras and, and different things. So it's modular. All right. So, and hot chicks like it. So that's a big plus. Hot chicks like it. So it's always a big plus. All right, let's go to Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers, Brooks Brothers, and let's look at some of these shoes. Let's look at these shoes. And by the way, their website is not that easy to navigate. It's kind of screwed up, though, just par for the course. Now, before we go into this, uh, wait, first let me go men's. Let me go to shoes, and we'll let that load in. Okay, so before we get started on that, let me just catch up real quick on the... Um, uh, future billionaire Lance right there, absolutely. 
my grail, uh, Nautilus 5711. I think a date just on Jubilee would suit Lance's personality. There you go. Uh, let's see. CK, I could be quite happy with finishing my collection off with a Patek 5180. There you go. Uh, hey, you get an 002, you'd throw stones at the Patek. <laughs> this absolutely trumps any Patek. Uh, let's see. Um, Craig is part of an esteemed company of fanny pack wearers, including Joe Rogan and Jesse Ventura. There you go. Try first, Rich Lance. When you're wearing your Nautilus and call into Craig, Lance, when you're wearing your Nautilus and call into Craig when he's 80, he's still going to criticize you. <laughs> yeah, I would say, hey, get rid of that Nautilus. <laughs> finish, damn. Um, finish, damn. How old are you, bro? 60. I'm only getting started. Um, no, I'm older than 60. I wish I was 60. That'd be nice if I could roll the clock back to 60. Carlos is in the house. I would love to have lived in the time of pocket protectors. I purchased one for a costume party. I dressed as a 60s, 70s engineer with a pocket protector and slide rule in the belt. There you go. Zombie so Booserve. Uh, Craig, what do you recommend for pistol holsters? Um... I mean, they've got all kinds of options for depending on the on what you're carrying. I mean, I I I'm old school. I like leather, but they have all these formed uh, plastic ones now that that a lot of them use. Uh, so, yeah, there, there are a lot of options. But yeah, I would I would go with a a Browning Browning. And I'm old school. I'd go with a Browning high power with a nice um, leather uh, holster made for that particular gun. Is where I would go with it. Um, let's see, Craig. I sent an email of some two-tone titanium monstrosities. Triforce search might be... Okay, I'll, I'll look at that. Okay. I guess they all have a different taste. I guess we all have very different tastes. Well, yeah, but we're trying to fix that. We're trying to take care of those that have poor taste and kind of give them a little bit of guidance on the channel. Any young guys here besides me and Lance? I'm 25, though, and not exactly young anymore. Yeah, you're over the hill for sure. Um... GS002 greater than Patek. Duh. <laughs> Have you seen this thing? I mean, unfreaking believable. It doesn't do it justice to see it, though. I mean, it, it, you got to see it in person. And that's hard to do because they're pretty damn rare. So there's that. Much rarer than a Patek. Um, let's see. Um, get a pistol holster to wear under your jacket or jacket a la bond don't need to open carry like a wannabe cowboy i wouldn't want an 002 over a 5180 as much as i appreciate the gs yeah but you'd have a much better watch and you 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 know the, the the chicks dig it the chicks dig it when they see the second hand on this how it just smooths around they they love that so there's that triforce rich is in the house also get a custom holster for your specific pistol absolutely absolutely they they form fit if you buy a leather one they, they you know they form them for for uh, yeah they they fit perfect um gotta earn my patek can't buy with daddy's money okay uh, okay all right all right let's go into let's take a look at the shoes let's take a look at the shoes see if we can make some sense out of this madness now let's see how we can how can we filter this Filter by, um, style, um, I'm trying to find, oh, Cordovan, that's what I want, Cordovan. Okay, now we're making progress, folks, Cordovan, da-da-da-da-da-da, oh, they've only got one? They've only got one left. That not that can't be right. That's not correct. That's not correct. They've got others. Um, something is wrong here. Okay. Um. Oh, for crying out loud! Give me a second. I'll go back to the. Why in the heck are these websites so terrible? Uh, men. Men shoes let's try this again without using that silly filter that doesn't work 
All right, what does this do here? Um, price, high to low. Okay, so that's what we need to do first of all, is sort high to low, because we want the high price stuff. We don't want the junk. Okay, now we're getting there, folks. Okay, we are getting there. We are making progress. Don't anybody panic. Don't anybody panic. Golden Fleece is the thing that we're looking for, but we're looking for Cordovan. Here we go. Okay, folks. Cordovan. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just about any of these. Okay, not the tassel loafers and all. Okay, so let's open this in a new, new tab. Let's open this in a new tab. And... See, I'm not down for the penny loafers and all that. If I'm going to get that, I would just get moccasin-style shoes and be a lot more comfortable. We're talking dress shoes here now. Peeling Company, Cap Toes. Um, I don't think those are Cordovan, though. But let's look at this one. Because those are English-made. Those are high-end. Uh, so open link and new tab. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at these few possibilities here. See, and this is where you got to get lucky, and they got to have your size, right? Okay, so here is Cordovan Cap Toes. All right, now these are made in Italy, I believe. Yeah, these are made in Italy. So that's a pretty high end. That's a pretty high end shoe. You you could probably research and figure out who the maker is, right? Who made these four that four books brothers? God, their website is terrible. No wonder they're going out of business. Okay, um, let's see here what it says. Uh, well, anyway, I believe this is Shell Cordovan, genuine Cordovan leather. Yes, so that would be Shell Cordovan. See, it says Shell Cordovan right here. That's the important thing. Okay, that's the expensive stuff. All right. These are now again. It's it's normally 748, but they're 561. But I think you can also get discount codes. I think you can get it even lower than that. I would be tempted on this one because this one they do have my size. I wear 11. I would be tempted on that one. Tell you the truth, that's a very elegant shoe. Very nice classic dress shoe. Okay, here's another one. I really like wingtips like this. But see, that this one was the one I would have bought. This they don't have my size. I would. Uh, they don't have 11. I was going to buy this puppy. This is stunning. This is a stunning piece. And again, this one I believe is made in Italy. Okay. And look at that shell cordovan. That that is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um. You know, th those, those will last a lifetime, folks. Any of you youngsters, you buy a pair of those puppies and take reasonable care of it, and, you know, you're going to have it resold a couple times over your lifetime, but that will literally last your lifetime, that shell cordovan. That stuff is unfreaking believable um, That's a high-end shoe. Now here, Peel & Company, this is, um, this is made in England, Okay. Crockett and Jones is they own this kind it's the same company basically. See, made in England. Okay. Um very, very elegant, very, very nice shoe. And this one though, I believe is Capskin. I believe this is not Cordovan. Just to look at it. Yeah, see this is calfskin. So not not at the level of of shell cordovan but a very high end shoe a very well made high end shoe nevertheless so there's a couple of possibilities there a couple of possibilities on brooks brothers if you could get that sale price and get it knocked down maybe another 15% with some kind of discount code uh, that would be a good move a good move on any of those any of those I just showed you have my seal of approval okay let's see what else we got here um, 
<laughs> and I laugh when people talk about passing watches down to their kids. Are you kidding me? As if the kid would give a damn. I think they'd much rather have money, right? So there you go. If you saved and invested that money and took that 20000 and turned it into like 150000 I think they'd rather have the 150000 uh, than the $20,000 watch. Triforce Rich is in the house. I paid for my day date all on my own, but I'm just pointing out I wouldn't be able to do that if I had student loan debt. I'm sure Carlos will be paying for his kid's education. There you go. Uh, yes, Patek is for gentlemen young. Just yes, Patek Patek is for gentlemen young. Just have fun, girls. Bounce. Okay, I'm not sure what that all means, but I I might agree with you. I try for sure. I got kicked out of school with no grades. Nearly went to prison. Found God and was blessed with a beautiful wife, family, and two businesses. My early dad had nothing to do with it. Okay. All right. Williams watches in the house. Uh, let's see. If you reach your s secret soon, you cry to the moon. Okay. Uh, if, if you were to ask your dad, I think that he'd be proud that he raised you so that you're able to buy watches with money you earn. Okay. There you go. Happy you got, uh, okay, uh, let's see here. Just let me go try to catch up here. I got a Daytona as my 50th birthday gift, but I swapped it out for the 5196. Not happy with Daytona readability. I hear you. Williams Watch is in the house. Um, yes, in a way, my old son pays some as he has a quite good scholarship. That That's the thing. That's what I was telling Brianna. You got to work and get, get as many scholarships as you can. Uh, let's see. Of course, my dad got a tag for 50th, AP for 60th. Patek is way superior and rare and a heirloom. Everyone's got a Rolex. See, I would pass on the AP. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, I would not think of a Rolex as a heirloom or any watch as a heirloom item. I think you're much better off just investing that money and, uh, and just rolling down some real nice investments to your heir as opposed to a watch. I don't think most of them are going to give a damn about the watch. It, you've got to be unusual to like watches like us. We're, we're not normal. I hate to break the news to you guys, but liking a solid gold dress watch is not normal. And liking a any kind of a titanium or stainless steel luxury watch is not normal not normal but that's okay you don't always have to be normal <clears throat> let's see here uh, let's see I'm a tiny bit proud that I'm the only one of my siblings not to ask our parents for financial help that's good I used every day and loved it okay uh, Craig I sent an email 18 gurgle titanium okay let's check it out let's let's get to the email Let's get to the email. And by the way, on Brooks Brothers, there might be some sales at some uh, stores, Brooks Brothers stores. If they're actually going out of business, uh, they might have some clearance sales and stuff. I mean, you might be able to get some deals on some stuff, but be very, very selective because they do have some stuff that's marginal quality. you got to be careful. Like a lot of those boat shoes that we just saw on their main page of their of their shoes, a lot of those are... are Imports and a lot of those are marginal quality. They used to all be high quality, but they've they've shifted away from that. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're going to fall on their sword and be history. <clears throat> There's an Omega that I would pass on. That's kind of a little bit on the ugly side, so yeah, I would pass on that one. And I would pretty much pass on that one too. I I just yeah. I'm not a big fan of any chronograph, and that just looks a little bit busy and a little bit gaudy. It just, yeah, I I don't think I would go that way. I mean, it's not a hateful watch. Don't get me wrong, but I think there's a lot. There are a lot of options that uh, that would move to the forefront in front of that puppy there. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, it's only a sort of way I look at it is I uh, worked as okay. Um, I wouldn't spread the watch hobby to my worst enemy. <laughs> Good point. 
Very, very good point. Triforce Rich, um, that sounds like the American... Okay, I loved how it looked wearing a business suit. Okay. Uh, glad you said that loving watches is not a hobby that is considered to be normal. Then again, though, people who can afford the watches did something to separate themselves from the rest. There you go. Well, maybe they didn't waste a lot of money on buying other things that, you know, people people spend a lot of money on a lot of junk, if you think about it. And that's why, that's why this is part three of don't buy junk. I mean, here is a perfect example. I'm looking at these, these, these high-end dress watches and stuff, and I look at my, my church's shoes that I showed on this show the other day, and I'm just glad that I stepped up when I bought those they had that pair, and then they had a pair that was like maybe $150 less. I think I paid about $500 for that pair of churches, uh, and this was in like 1982, right? It was a lot of money then, but they had some that were like $250 that were like half the price, right? And, but I stepped up, and I got the custom grade. I got the, the uh, ranch oxide or whatever they call it, and, and so that shoe now still looks like new like decades later and the sole is holding up great it's got a very very strong sole it's probably a JR sole on there uh, and so the old saying you get what you pay for right in some ways it matters it does matter but you assuming you didn't get ripped off right but you buy the higher end thing and it's gonna last and if at some point I need to have that shoe resold fixed that one's on the original soles still by the way um, I've got a pair of Johnson and Murphys that I've had to have a half sole put on those, and those were bought at about the same time. They wore out a lot quicker. And Johnson and Murphy, those weren't junk shoes, but they were, you know, probably half the price of the uh, churches. Uh, but they, you know, uh, matter of fact, I'll grab them and show you, show you those. <clears throat> So here are the um, the wing tips, the Johnson and Murphy wing wing tips, and they are partially lined. Um, they're they're still in pretty good shape. The uppers are pretty good. Don't really have any cracks. Uh, they're holding up pretty good, considering these are decades old. But see, this has had a half sole put on it. You can probably see the seam right there. See that? So this has had a half sole put on it, but they did a good job back in the day when they put that sole on there, and it's still it's still holding up solid. So this is a good solid shoe, right? But the churches here are the churches shoe, ranch oxide, okay, and these are these still look almost like new. These have the original soles on them. Still very solid. I wore these to New York to meet with the Grand Seiko folks. Right, we walked quite a bit around New York in these. Um, that's where I bought them, and they're still doing very, very good. Not bad for a pair of shoes purchased in 1982. Okay, so there you go. There you go. Buy good ones, take care of them, and they will last. And have a good rotation. Like I said, back in the day when I was wearing the dress shoes a lot, I don't wear them as often anymore, of course, but when I was wearing them every day, I had about a five pair rotation. So I wore them once a week. Uh, and that's how I did that. 
I have another I have another couple pairs that I bought from Johnson and Murphy uh, that are still in pretty good shape and then I got another pair of churches that are still in pretty decent shape so uh, I think I've retired maybe two pairs just totally retired them of the of my rotation that I had let me think I've got the churches the churches the two pairs of Johnson and Murphy and another pair of churches so I've got four pairs left out of my five pair maybe I had a six pair rotation seems to me I've retired two pairs of dress shoes so anyway I've got four pairs left now that are still in good shape from my original rotation whatever my original rotation was it was probably six shoes now that I think about it because I worked on Saturdays so I wore them once a week so yeah it must have been a six shoe rotation uh, Corey's in the house Craig with buying luxury shows shoes for many 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 decades before you I know what I'm talking about okay tell me what you're talking about I missed your comment um, uh, okay I guess you're just trolling okay um, I'm still to get into manual winding watches. I love the Oris Pro. Okay, all right. CK overpriced. Okay, I like the chronographs for timing things over an hour. Also, chronographs measure time far more precisely down to the second, plus pausing function than a dive bezel. How often do you time things, though? <laughs> I just don't need that functionality on any kind of regular basis. And if I do, I can use my phone. So I'm not so sure about all that, but. Anyway, if you time things a lot, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Um, and let's see. Corey. Uh, uh oh. S Corey got hit. Corey got got the wrench. He got the wrench. CK zombie zombie like when exactly do you use it? Diving because most of us don't dive. Okay. Uh, send a photo. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at the photo. Let's take a look at the photo that uh, Lance sent. Oh, I, hey, I got two I got two emails in here. Stand by. Oh, this is a Breitling. Okay, hold on, I'll show it to you. Don't anybody panic. Don't anybody panic. There it is. Some reason there's, why is there so much of a gap between the strap and the case? That looks like too much of a gap there. Other than that, I like the shape of the case and everything like that. The lugs look a little bit long. The lugs could have been a little shorter, and that so we could have gotten that gap so that strap is tighter to the case. See how this one is? See how it's nice and tight to the case? Right? It just goes right up and meets the case very nice and tight. To me, that's the way, um, that's the, way the strap should be. Uh, let's see here. Um, good luck, Trifurch Rich. Uh, actually, I think Time Teller's day job is consulting. And at Grandpa Craig, what does did Grandma wear? Uh, she wore a lady date in 18, solid 18 karat gold with diamonds. That's what uh, my lovely wife back in the day wore. I think she still has it. <clears throat> Craig, I sent you a photo. How do you regulate your Rolex? Uh, Craig, I sent you a photo. How do you regulate your Rolex? Do a time check. Know your watch position accordingly. Okay. All right. Let's look at this. Um, let's look at this other email. Stand by, folks. Don't anybody. Don't anybody panic. Don't anybody panic. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> We'll put that up on the screen in case somebody wants to do a free screen on it and take a look at that. It looks like a, some Rolex paperwork. So, um, if your watch loses or gains a few seconds per day, remember there are 86,400 seconds in 24 hours. You, you, you can correct it without expert aid. The rate of a watch varies slightly depending on its position. Take it off at night and place it as follows. To gain a few seconds, lay the watch flat with the dial upper, up, uppermost. 
uh, lay flat with the dial, up, uh, the dial pointing up, I guess. To lose a few seconds, lay the watch vertically with the winding count, winding button downwards. Okay. To lose rather more seconds, lay the watch. Okay. Yeah, but see, I don't think any of that will. Um, I don't think any of that will apply to the spring drive, because of the way the spring drive is regulated differently. So, I don't think that will help with a spring drive. Uh, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> that's why dive watches don't appeal to me. Most are too big, and they have rotating bezel. I've never used Williams watches. Yeah, the main reason I bought mine is for legibility, easy to read, and for durability. Those two functions was the main reason I got that. That's a heavy use uh, watch. Abuse serve. I used to consult for Fortune 500 companies, but now I want to help out small, mid-sized businesses to help them grow. So far, so good, but we'll go full throttle in a few months. There you go. Uh, Trashy Larry. Trashy Larry got hit with a wrench. Wow. Uh, and CK says, Craig, wow. Okay. Honestly, it's usually never anything critical. Usually I time my trips with the chrono to see if I can beat my personal record. There you go. Try for switches in the house. Any excuse to use our watch functions? By the way, let me know if you want to hit up Rodeo when it opens up. Be a serve. I'm down. Uh, you talking about the rodeo at the J-Bar W Ranch here in Frederick County? I'll go out to the rodeo here at J-Bar W Ranch, absolutely. Craig, is the spring drive quartz thermal compensated? No, it is not. No, it is not. That's one of the reasons why it, I think the new movement is. I think the new one they came out with is, but mine are not. And I think that's one of the reasons why the 9F is more accurate than the spring drive is because it is thermal compensated. So there you go. <clears throat> but again, I'm I'm very happy with the accuracy of of this watch and uh, and extremely happy with the 231. I mean, it's just insanely accurate. So good enough for me. Um, tachometer scale is probably the thing. Point. Oh, one percent people use. Um, Rodeo Drive, Craig. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Rodeo Drive. Okay. No, I meant Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive. Okay, got it. I'm I'm hip now. I'm hip now. Uh, did they burn any of that, or did they did they successfully loot any of that? I never heard the the full follow up story on that whole thing. Checking my email one more time here just to make sure nothing uh, important that I need to deal with. Let's see a couple of things I need to delete here. And I will show you um, uh, let's see here. Um, okay, I'll have to I'll, I will reply to that later. I'm not sure about all that. Um, just check one more thing here. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me show you the pair that I looked at the other day. The shoes. We talked about the shoes earlier. I'm going to show you this pair that 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 I made an offer on the other day. Uh, da, 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 da. And he he did not accept my offer. He did not accept my offer. My offer was declined. Okay, my offer on these was declined. Okay, this is. Um, these again, Crockett and Jones, under the name Peel and Company, makes these for Brooks Brothers. Okay, and the gentleman selling them is is asking five twenty five new with the box, and I offered him four hundred and fifty dollars. He's free shipping from New Jersey. Okay, I offered him four hundred and fifty dollars. I'll settle immediately, but he turned me down. 
He turned the Craigster down. Just flat turned the Craigster down on the offer. Okay? <clears throat> so these are the stunners. These are... are now that's a, a factory photo. That's not the actual shoes. That's a photo he probably got off the website. Right? Uh, but that's the actual shoes in the box. Okay? And depending on the color balance on the camera, the brown... The, maybe doesn't look quite that dark in person. Uh, it's pretty close. They're pretty dark brown, but I don't think they look quite that dark in person. I think um, I'll show you the photo uh, that I think is a more accurate color. Because remember, the white balance on these cameras, depending on the lighting and all, you know, it doesn't always look right. So that and well, even in that picture, they look kind of dark. I don't think they're quite that dark in person, but it is a it is a rather dark brown. But I think that's a very rich looking brown. I think that's a very attractive, and that and that's pretty rare in Shell Cordovan to see that color. But Brooks Brothers did have that color fairly often, but other makers like Alden and. Um, uh, Alan Edmonds, uh, their shell cordovan, it, it, typically you won't see that brown color very often with them. So that's a pretty rare combo. And of course Crockett and Jones, they're no joke. They, th that's a pretty high quality piece of kit right there. And, and tell you the truth, even at the price he's asking, 525 is not a horrendous price. But I'm not going to pay that because I don't really need them. And, and you know, I'm looking for the I'm looking for even a better deal. So there you go. Um, uh, it's my understanding rodeos isn't open yet. They have the GS boutique there. Okay, I still don't want real life to collide with the watch world. Uh, a pulse scale on a bezel is probably more useful than a tach tachometer. Durs in the house with all this wrench brutality going on. The Democrats might go burn the YouTube headquarters down. There you go. Williams Watches is in the house. Craig, so you got your dive watch to truly be used as a tool watch and fulfill that role. Use my OP36 for that. Well, yeah, I mean, I buy all my watches to actually wear and use. I don't have any box watches. You're not going to see me with a box watch. I can tell you that right now. And Zombie View Serve, I hope they had merchandise slashed away, but they're serious. I uh, stashed away, but they're serious property damage. Is there really? Why in the well? Why in the heck could they not secure Rodeo Drive? I mean, my gosh, that's the one thing the police should have been able to do is at least secure that area. I mean, what are they? idiots what are they blithering freaking idiots i mean it's unbelievable you know you pay all kinds of tax money insane tax money and they can't even protect your property that is insane that's the one thing they're supposed to do right that's their main job don't get me started folks don't get me started on that derek's in the house craig uh Craig, when are you and Bree recording at Rolex AD? That's a good question. They are open now, by the way. They are open by appointment only. But I have to see when Brianna is going to come out of the house because she's had herself on lockdown. So we'll see when she's going to venture out. She's scared of the virus thing. Um, let's see. Uh, true and fine. They're more aesthetically pleasing. Okay. Is Clive Skyping in ever again? <laughs> Good question. Ask him. Ask Clivester. He, first of all, he never Skyped in. He said he couldn't get Skype working on his computer. He called in another way. I think I came in through a Hangout. Um, but he, he's never Skyped in. Lance is in the house. Craig, what do you think about the Oyster Perpetual? I'm thinking about getting the OP instead of a used Datejust 36. I like it. I like the Oyster Perpetuals. I've said that many times on the channel. I, there's a number of them that I really like a lot. Uh, and I would not miss not having the date. I'm good with not having the date. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a cool, 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 cool move. Craig, uh, who makes your favorite polo shirts? 
Well, I mean, back in the day, they were the Ralph Lauren polo shirts that were made in the USA, but I don't know if that's the case anymore. So I don't know who makes decent ones nowadays. Uh, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't bought a polo shirt for 20 years. I've still got plenty of them, so I don't need to buy any more anytime soon. Uh, if GS Beverly Hills is open, I have to see if they will let me stream in for the channel in the store. Yes, absolutely. That'd be so cool. Perhaps they can show us some pieces. That would be super cool. Triforce Rich, Kyle, they are super nice there. They'd be stupid not to free marketing. Kyle's in the house. They purposely, they purposely didn't protect it. All planned out. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Craig, what did you realize when you had... When did you realize you had a watch problem? Um, I have a problem with quality stuff, period, not just watches. I, I have a problem where I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist in a lot of things. And I, I was a professional appraiser for a number of years. So I, my job was basically examining antique and classic cars and seeing how well they re, were restored or if they were all original, examining the quality of them and so forth, and then determining a value on them so my my job was determining quality right and so that extended over to anything that I bought or anything that I got into or whatever I was always trying to ferret out the the, the absolute best quality that I could get for my money and so I'm pretty pretty obsessed with with that and so of course for a watch that led me to buying Rolex watches and wearing Rolex watches because they were the way to go back in the day um, and until I discovered Grand Seiko that they were the way to go for a, for a, you know daily use reliable affordable you know they weren't terribly overpriced right they're a little bit overpriced now but they weren't back in the day they were still an expensive watch but they were you, know, you got a lot of watch for the money, in my opinion. So, no, it's all about quality for me on on everything, not just watches. Everything, including including women, including women. Yeah, it's all about quality. So there you go. Zombies in the house. Yeah, but I trust L.A. would bring out the riot squad before letting Antifa take over like Seattle saddled Seattle did. There you go. Kyle is right. They let them destroy Rodeo. Heads would have been cracked, and then L.A. would go up in flames. Uh, Clive has an awesome beard right now, Craig. Will you please just join the club and grow a mustache already? You got to join. The yeah, that's ridiculous that Clivester let himself go that way. And I mean, I, these people letting themselves go just because it's a freaking lockdown. Now, I haven't had my hair cut, I admit, right? But at least I've been shaving. My gosh, at least I can shave. And I've done a little self trimming, I've trimmed around the ears and, you know, tried to keep things under a little bit of control I'm, I might go try to get a haircut this week I'm trying to let everybody the, I think the local barbershop opened up but I'm trying to let everybody you know get their hair cut and get, let him get caught up and then go when he's not as busy so I might wait another week or so get it get it let, let every let all the let everybody run and get their hair cut all at once right and then let Craig go in after all the fervor is and everything's calmed down uh, yes, polo good, but they don't make them in the U.S. anymore. Yeah, that's the problem. So buy vintage, man. That's probably the only solution. Buy vintage ones. Kyle's in the house. Maybe you can find some new old stock. Yes, they are very nice, but they won't give me any discounts. I usually have to deal with Xavier. Okay. Lacoste. Yes, some vintage Lacostes that are made in the USA. Absolutely, but I don't know if they make those in the USA anymore either. So you got to be real careful. Dur, when are you starting your channel? Lacoste polo shirts for the win. Ralph Lauren made mostly in Indonesia now. There you go. I don't know if any of them are made in the U.S. now. Dur's in the house, Trevor Church. I got a lot of my plate right now and have to figure some stuff out before I get into channel up and running. I know zero about cameras and editing okay <clears throat> the mighty rat if if you in the u.s wear lacoste is poser okay kyle they refuse to give me any discount as well would never buy from them unless it was some crazy limited edition but then i could just call steve there you go 
in Europe where uh, Polo, Lauren, okay, interesting, Craig, RE appraiser, not sure you have mentioned that previously, makes sense, okay. Uh, Craig, so how many watches do you keep in your collection? Do you trade often? I have three watches right now. I don't generally, cre I don't generally uh, collect watches. I just buy them to wear. Do I trade often? I've gone through a few Grand Seikos here in my move from Rolex to Grand Seiko. I tried out a snowflake for a while and decided that wasn't for me. Um, but generally speaking, and now of course I've got the, the 005, which is really a surplus watch at this point, the one on the right, just because I'm wearing the 002 instead of it. Um, but the 231 is, is a solid keeper, a solid keeper. Uh, so I'm pretty happy between the 231 and this 002 as a rotation, as a two watch rotation, I'm very, very happy. Very happy. And generally for 40 years of wearing Rolexes, I generally had a two watch rotation. Always a day date. Maybe there was a year or two in there where I didn't have a day date. You know, I was like between day dates or something. But always a day date as my gold stunner. And then some kind of a steel watch in rotation. Usually either a Submariner or a GMT or then a GMT-2 when the GMT-2s came out. I bought one of the first GMT-2s. And then um, I also did rotate in a uh, Omega Seamaster 120 for several years. I wore one of those. Um, so I was rotating the Omega with the day date uh, for a while. Uh, so that's pretty much been my watch a journey. Now I did some reviews here on the channel of some other watches but I didn't really wear or use them much. That was mainly just for reviews and just kind of screwing around. Uh, but those weren't really, uh, you know, my, my go-to watches. And those are all gone. Those have all been sold. So, um, so I ordered two pairs of Bill's khakis today. Got 30% off as a first order. Whoa, okay. Cool, cool, cool. You will love them. You will absolutely love them. I'm assuming the ones you bought are made in the USA. I'm assuming that's still the case. Good deal. Kevin's in the house. How? Wow. Long show today. I managed to arrive at work, and it's still streaming. Well, it's been an hour and 15 minutes, so not unusual for us to go more than an hour. Isn't Clive a razor collector? That's a good question. Maybe he is. Kyle's in the house. I would like to see those limited pieces, but yeah, got to buy from Steve, okay? I mean, we, by default, respect more what we cannot get. I know Lacoste is everywhere, but less than Polo Lauren, okay? Uh, Dur says, chicks dig mustaches these day, Craig. If you grow a stash, the chicks will be knocking at your door. Grow a pencil stash. Okay, there you go. Good advice. Triforce Rich is in the house. Tried out the Timeless Razor today. Not very aggressive. Had to apply pressure. I'll have to get used to it, but it causes no irritation. May have to do multiple passes next time. Oh, I always do two passes. <clears throat> Not three, but I always do two passes. I do one relatively quick pass not trying to k get everything right and then I do a final one more pass and that usually gets anything I didn't get and then I just kind of feel with my hand and if there's somewhere I missed I kind of you know hit it again but two passes generally does the trick so why don't you try that don't don't press you know don't put extra pressure you shouldn't have to do that try one pass getting most and then another pass finishing everything up and then report to us how that works Triforce Rich Kevin are you in Australia is that correct that's right David um, be careful and uh, tree uh, be careful and do not kill yourself um, are you Australian as well David okay uh, Carlos I have to stay alive to straighten out your son okay we should get Lance some shoe polish to rub on his facial whiskers so he can darken in the hairs to give him a proper mustache. Oh, jeez. Please, please. Uh, let's see. Um, sounds like timeless razors wouldn't be for me. I need an aggressive shaver for my sensitive skin and coarse beard. Well, they have different 
blade gaps. You can, you can specify the blade gap on a lot of their razors so you can get the gap that you want. I don't like one that's too aggressive, that has too wide a gap, right? But some people like that, so you can absolutely get that. Yes, you can. Um, the movement on the 231 is as smooth as <laughs> greased otter, mighty rat. Yes. I hereby authorize uh, physical punishment. Craig, have you ever owned any tag hewers? No, <laughs> no, please, dear God, no. David's in the house. I am American, though, lived abroad for six years. Okay, all right. Um, had Australian friends in both places. Okay, cool. Craig uh, should make a video about your journey and your watch journey. Would be interesting first time I'm visiting your channel. I do have videos up about my, I do have a video that I think it's titled My 40-Year Journey from Rolex to Grand Seiko. I've got a video about that. I've got a bunch of videos here on my channel. Search around. Search around. You'll find some uh, videos, some of which are produced videos and some are live streams, but you'll find them. They're there. Uh, they have a lot of options that are way more aggressive, like their scallop steel. I, I use the aluminum, okay? Um, I'm not a fan of tag anymore. Serve no purpose, really. Lower price points. Not good at the time. Keeping better alternatives on the higher end. Yes. Lamont's in the house. My dad's but me bought me a Rolex, yo. Oh, he got a Rolex. Whoa. Triforce Rich, I just bought a McCurr 37C slant bar, which is perfect for me. Okay. Le Lamont is balling today. <laughs> now I'm balling for real. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, tags are great. Beginner watches. Congrats, Lamont. Okay. Um, Bill's Khaki's website says cut and sewn in USA or words to that effect. Okay, that's good enough. I think they're I think you're going to find they're very high quality. But do not do not discount finding some on eBay at even better prices. Uh you'd be surprised what you'll find on eBay if you search around. And what you can do is you can do saved searches on there where you search, you know, Bill's khakis and then your waist size, let's say 34 times 30 would be the length, right? And then just save that search. And then they'll let you know when somebody posts something that matches that criteria. And you might see a mint pair, mint condition pair posted in there for like 15 bucks or something. I mean, you know, what the hell? Just grab it. I mean, send it to your cleaners, have it cleaned and pressed and all, and you're good to go. Um, I enjoy shaving with a dull razor dry. There you go. I sometimes shave with my, with my knife, with my Sebenza knife when I'm traveling. Uh, let's see. Um believe that one, I'll tell you another one. Uh, how do you think Oris compares to Tag or Sen? That's a good question. I think I would go with Oris. I like some of the Oris pieces. Dur says, I like my women aggressive, my razors not so much. There you go. Lamont's in the house. He's in the house heavy. Uh, Cheat Town says, California, I would agree with you when I say it's down to the poor Tag. What? Okay. Uh, now he want to want to get in the job. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love the quality of Oris watches. I like where the design is going, especially when you compare the Aquas to a Aqua Racer. Okay, both use Salita. Oris is better quality any day. Sen, I haven't owned. Okay. David's in the house for the past year. Have been using a Rockwell 6C Razor. Works extremely well for me. David, man, if you upgrade to a Timeless Razor, you'll be like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking cool. Triforce Riches in the house. Which Rolex did you get, Lamont? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> so, so speaking of Lamont rolling into town, I was I was on my way down to my place in Florida, and I was I was traveling in the motor coach, the Bluebird Wander Lodge with the Cat 3208 diesel. And uh, uh, somebody that I'd met on Google Plus and some hangouts and stuff and, and kind of got to know him, he has a place in northern Florida. And he said he had he had room for me to park overnight at his place and chill out. And, and uh, so I said, sure, what the heck? I need a place to, to stay on the way down to Sarasota. What the heck? I'll stop. So I, and I, and I, I called him when I was about, 
five minutes out from his place, and I said, okay, I'm, I'm five minutes out. I'm getting ready to roll in heavy. And, um, and so he was out there to meet me when I, when I pulled up in the, in the motor coach. And uh, he said, damn, he said, when you, when you say you're going to roll in heavy, you do. Because that, that Bluebird Wander Lodge was no freaking joke. It was about 30,000 pounds uh, for a 31-footer. That's, that's a heavy-duty piece. So, yeah, that's how, that's how you roll in. Uh, Lance is in the house. Some tags are okay. The Aqua Racer is very high quality. I would say it is up, to th up, up there with the Oris Aquas. Okay, there you go. Uh, let's see. I can't look at half the Swatch Group watches today and not thank Macy's Mall Watch with their designs and dials. Oh, uh, Williams watches a sky a sky dweller, brilliant. It was from Chris Chris es Essery. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna wrap. I'm getting hungry, folks. I'm getting hungry. But hey, nobody commented on these on these shoes. What did you think about these shoes? These cord of the, these shell cordovan, these shell cordovan stunners. What did you guys think about the shell cordovan stunners made in England for Brooks Brothers? New in the box, new in the box. What do you think? What do you think about those? Nobody said a word about those. I could see Lance rocking a caliber 11 golf edition Monaco. Okay. The Sky Dealer was discontinued years back, Lamont. It can't be new. <laughs> Poor Lamont. Poor Lamont. Okay. All right. We're going to wrap this puppy up. Wrap this puppy up. And, hey, I'm going to give Bree another plug. Let's find Bree's page here. If you can support the lovely Bree, if you can go over and just sign up, sign up as a Patreon. There she is wearing one of my Gitman Brothers shirts, by the way. And there she is wearing one of my um, one of my uh, Oxford sport coats. That was the um, the uh, uh, darn. What was that made of? Um, alpaca. That was the alpaca one. Uh, let's see. Um, Mont, Dad, and Triforce Rich says Craig Crockett and Jones shoes are amazing, can't go wrong. Well, what do you think, Triforce Rich? Should I? Um, I have to race Bree to 1,000 subs. There you go. Kyle's in a race with the lovely Brianna. Uh, let's see. Craig, uh, great show, Craig and everyone. I would love to get the Monaco Golf at the same point. It's very cool. Okay. No Antifa wraps up. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Make sure you see if it's U.S. sizing or U.K. Need to go. Yeah, well, it's um, on the Brooks Brothers ones. They size them in U.S. sizes. So, um, so yeah, that's a non-issue. Um, if you look, let me see if I can find them again. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> any of the Brooks Brothers stuff, just keep this in mind, guys, because that's a very good point. The Brooks Brothers stuff, if they say 11D, that's U.S., okay? So I wear 10.5D uh, English size, and that equates to 11D American, right? So, so that's my size, 11D. Now, on this particular last... These are known for being a little bit on the narrow side, but my feet are a little bit on the narrow side anyway, so these would probably work fine. I kind of hate to buy them without trying them on. I, you know, really do, and th and that's the reason why I offered him 450. I figured, okay, I'll take the chance if he ta if he takes that price. But I kind of hate to pay 525 for them, and and then have them not fit absolutely perfectly. So that's kind of why I didn't you know, up the price. I could have probably offered him five hundred, he'd probably take it, right? Four fifty might have been a little bit low. But I'm still on the fence. I might I might up my offer a little bit, but I might just stick with it. I might stick with it just the way it is. Um and by the way, you don't size down one whole size. For me it's ten and a half 
on the UK sizing and then 11 on US. So that's how it works for me. I don't know about, I can't speak for others. My churches, for example, these, <coughs> whoops, these say um, right on the bottom here, 10D. Um, oh. Uh, let's see if you can see that there. 10, you can just barely see. There's the D, and there's the 10 over to the right there. Um, so, so these are the English size, these churches. These are 10 Ds, and they fit me perfectly. And then in American shoes, high quality shoes, I wear 11 D. So there you go. Um, okay, uh, I think I'm going to start building another personal protection robot today. Um, I'm sized 9 US and UK size 8 was perfect. Crocker and Jones themselves told me to size down 1. Well, you know, the other thing is if you're comparing, um, if you're comparing like sneakers, that's different. They're, they're often sized about a half size different than, than high end dress shoes. So if, if you buy high end dress shoes, that might be the di distinction there on the US sizing. So for example, I might wear size 11 in those Crockett and Jones, 11D, and Nikes, I might have to get 11 and a half or even 12 in a Nike, because they're all screwed up on their sizing. So yeah, I mean, in the bottom, of the, the bottom line is, it's really a good, it's really a good idea to, um, to try on shoes and just make sure how they fit. Williams watches my shoes say UK 10, US 11. Are those like some kind of like sneakers or something? Remember, we're talking high-end dress shoes. It's a different animal. Uh, church's chicken is, is the bottom. Okay. <laughs> that sounds right. My underwear says 12D. No, I'm a nine and a half sneakers and a nine dress shoes. Okay, got you. Uh, at Craig, make a video about your watch journey. I've already done it. It's up. It's up. Go take a look. Durs in the house, Craig. I give up on Skype. Can't figure it out. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right. On that note, we're going to wrap this puppy up. I'm going to switch back to the lovely Bree one more time. And we're going to wrap this puppy, wrap it up, wrap this puppy up. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and click the little bell for notifications.